Hello there, this is Laughter210, and today I'll be talking to you about a celebration that is going on in Geneva, Switzerland, and it is a commemoration of l'escalade. L'escalade means climbing in French, and the, today we're celebrating the uh, victory of, the, of Geneva over the surprise attack by the Duke of Savoy, Charles Emmanuel I. Now, Charles Emmanuel had his eyes on Geneva for quite some time. And he goes to the religious leaders and tells them that Geneva is a Protestant city and must be converted to a Christian Catholicism. And of course, the um, he gets to go ahead because it's a fantastic idea, right? But no one really attacks a city for religious purposes. The real motivations were that Geneva was one a very wealthy city. Two, well, Charlemagne wanted to uh, reconquer it. And three. Uh, Geneva also provided access to uh, French territory and Charles Emmanuel had great ambitions about on how he wanted to uh, take some of the French land. So he devised, he thinks that, night, that he should attack the city and that it's going to be a night attack. So he calls his uh, brother-in-law, Philip III of Spain, and say, Listen, Philip, how would you like to take the city of Geneva for me? Philip says, okay, I agree, it's going to be fantastic. What's the plan, uh, uh, Charlie? So Charles says, okay, what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to take our soldiers, it's going to be on the longest night of the year, we're going to attack Geneva on December, between the night of December 11th to the, uh, December 12th. Also, we're, we're going to tell the soldiers to polish their uh, helmets with coal or black paint so that they won't, uh, so that there won't be no reflections at night. Also, we're going to build ladder, retractable ladders so that they'll be easy to transport and easy to take apart or and uh, put back together and during the siege. And so that's that's the plan. And once you're inside we're gonna set a commando one inside the wall over the walls and unlock the front gates from within. And we're gonna have a signal, it's gonna be a pistol shot. Once you hear once you hear a pistol shot, you um uh, this is the go-ahead for the ra remain remainder of the troops to uh, march inside the city. The city, will be, the city will be taken and all will end well. So Philip says, okay, that's great. Fantastic plan, uh, my uh, dear brother-in-law. And so then... So, however, in, me in, the, mean in the meantime, Geneva is kind of worried about its security, but not really. This is a precaution. They decide to raise their wall by a couple of meters. Now at night, some uh, some of the s some Savoyans sneak inside the city and measure the walls so that they will so that they can have the right coordinates, the right measurements. Uh, so that they uh, they can build the ladders long enough, so that the ladders will be long enough. So a couple of days passes, and at one point, a stranger comes to the gates of Geneva and warns Genevians that this, something's about to happen with Savoy. It smells like rotten fish, and he doesn't like it, and that Geneva should not be like Canadians and not lock your doors at night. But Genevians says, oh, okay, well, 
We'll think about it. But thanks, thanks for the message. We'll, we'll think about it. And guy, and so the missing the, uh, the guy leaves. The mystery man leaves. And so uh, December 11th comes, and the civilian army marches towards Geneva with their black helmets and retractable ladders. And they arrive at the city around 2 o'clock in the morning on December 12th. And the group of commandos starts going over the wall. However, they encounter the night, the night guards. And during that encounter, they kill one of them. Uh, his name was, I think, Francois Bouzel. And I think at one point, there's a pistol shot that is being fired. Now remember, the secret message that said that the city was, uh, that the city gate were open, was a pistol shot. So the remainder of the army hears the, hears the uh, signal and starts marching to the city. Now, in the meantime, the uh, one of the other ni other nine guards uh, ran ran towards ran towards the uh, city and starts to alarming everyone in case they didn't hear the pistol shot already. Um, we're being attacked. We're being attacked. They get to the streets, and so all hell breaks loose. People get out get out of their beds and start rushing to the s in the streets with whatever weapons they can find, and starts beating down the uh, invading uh, commandos. So at one point, uh, Sha. At one point, Isaac Mercier, the uh, night guard, had, had uh, fled to the city to warn everyone. Goes on the rampart and decides to cut the uh, her. He decided to cut the hearse, and so that so that it falls down and it will prevent any of the civil winds, uh, special troops, to. Uh, open the door or uh, tear it into pieces. So this means that whoever that the troops inside the city are trapped. They can go f they can go uh, by the front gate because it's it's been it's being blocked and also locked. So I mean closed. So there there's only one way back. And that is back where they came from, over the wall. And uh, there's a couple of interesting things that happens in the city and, and during that time. And I'll mention two notable two notable female characters. The first one is Adam Royaume. Now, Adam Royaume was above uh, was living had a nice little apartment above one of the gate. Um, Overpass, I guess you can see that. And she was cooking some soup, vegetable soups, for the next morning. And she sees that there's a uh, soldier that's uh, that is under the gate. So sh what she does is she takes a bowl, the pot of soup, and throws it out the window. Now the the soup falls into uh, on the guy's on the soldier's head, and he dies a horrible and boring death. And uh, th there's a tradition that is related to this incident, which I will men which I will mention maybe in in another video. So there's also um there's also the story of Latin Piaget, who. Uh, According to legend, was so scared that a civilian a soldier would come inside her apartment and murder her that she takes she finds an fort to uh, move a big piece of uh, furniture to block the door. 
and according to uh, the legend, the uh, urban legend, it took I think three or five guys to uh, move the piece of furniture again, just to show that when you're really really scared, you find incredible superhuman strength. And <clears throat> so now the city is pretty much awake and people are fighting in the streets some wounds are, are some wind soldiers are running trying to run out of the city uh pia some of the uh villagers um head to towards the uh the wall and light up the cannons and starts firing on the ladders to prevent further soldiers from climbing over the wall also at one point, they somehow managed to reel to lift up the the hearse and open the gate, and start to confront the uh, Savoyan army that was marching towards the city. Of course, now the Savoyan army is in total disarray. The uh, su the surprise has been broken, and everything breaks. Up. The whole plan breaks, falls apart. And now, uh, Sha uh, Philip the uh, Third goes back to his brother-in-law, and kind of disappointed, he says, yeah, "Well, yeah, uh, I kind of, and the invasion did not go as planned." Which and Charles Emmanuel Premier. Um, Famously tells this line, Vous avez fait là une belle cacade. In other words, this means you messed up. Now, Byrne hears about the attack, and since the Swiss Confederacy is basically a military alliance, if one city gets attacked, then others should provide military help. So, Byrne decides to uh, send some troops. To, uh, to help Geneva in case if Savoy uh, attacks again. However, Savoy will not attack again, so the military help was not needed but very much appreciated. And Savoy is basically signed the treaty, uh, the Treaty of Saint Julien, which re renounces any further attempt to attack the city of Geneva. So this is it. Uh, this is the story of L'Escalade. And I will make a video later about the uh, traditions of L'Escalade.